costumes to cinematography, sitcoms have their own visual language. Usually filmed on colourful, indoor sets, you can tell the difference between a sitcom and a drama just by looking at a single still image. Sitcoms exist in every subgenre, from sci-fi to police procedurals. But one idea has reigned supreme since the dawn of American TV – self-contained stories about families and friends set in the real world. Their costumes are usually designed to be simple and relatable, which is part of the reason why sitcoms often feel rooted in a specific period in fashion history. They follow real-world trends. That's why Marvel's WandaVision is such an intriguing idea, borrowing the style of vintage sitcoms to weave a new kind of fantasy world. In this video, I'm going to take some cues from that show and explore the history and visual storytelling of sitcom fashion. But don't worry, you can still follow if you haven't seen WandaVision. I want us to fit in. Oh, this is gonna be a gas! Hi there, I'm Gavia Baker-Whitelaw and this is Behind the Scenes, decoding the world of costume design. While sitcom writers have explored surreal and imaginative settings since the earliest days of the genre, mainstream hits invariably boil down to a very basic premise – a workplace, a family home, or a group of friends who live close together. You're exactly right, and you get a point. Oh. <laughs> a show like Modern Family or One Day at a Time follows a long tradition of family TV sitcoms, beginning in the 1950s with Leave It to Beaver and Father Knows Best, continuing on with The Brady Bunch, Family Ties and The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Meanwhile, I Love Lucy, the classic sitcom about a 1950s couple, set the scene for later shows about groups of adult friends, like Cheers, Friends and How I Met Your Mother. Since the very beginning, Creators have subverted these tropes with sitcoms like The Addams Family, or added a dash of fantasy like Bewitched and I Dream of Jeannie, which introduced magic to the 1960s suburbs. So while a show like The Good Place may feel groundbreaking due to its deep philosophical themes, it actually follows a long tradition of sitcoms taking a familiar, everyday setting and making it weird. WandaVision follows in the same footsteps directly referencing what came before. It doesn't smell so good. It doesn't taste so good either. Prior to the invention of colour TV, shows like I Love Lucy cemented the idea of real-life sitcoms presenting a perky, idealised image of contemporary fashion, often contrasting with goofy one-off costumes. Then the 1960s introduced us to a world of colour, cementing a key element of the sitcom aesthetic – a bright colour palette. Shows like Gilligan's Island were positively garish, putting their characters in eye-catching outfits and makeup that were firmly rooted in 1960s fashion. Those colours catered to the novelty value of early colour TV, but they also provided enough shade and contrast for viewers who were still watching on black and white sets. This also explains why some of the men wear eyeshadow in 1960s Star Trek. It made their eyes more noticeable in black and white. So when WandaVision transforms from black and white to colour at the end of episode 2, it doesn't go for realistic colour, it looks like the bright, flat world of a 1960s sitcom. Good morrow, family mine. <laughs> Most 60s sitcoms were far from edgy. They are also extremely white in terms of casting, with the first generation of black sitcoms emerging in the 70s. Over the next few decades, the basic underpinnings of the genre remained the same, but those tropes expanded to represent a more diverse audience. The earliest years of the American sitcom presented an idealised, upbeat image of white middle-class life. But by the 80s and 90s, we saw a more diverse range of shows with a variety of different aesthetics. Shows about white suburban families tend to be pretty conservative, while sitcoms about young urban adults are comparatively trendy, and shows with majority black casts often have more interesting costumes. This reflects the tastes of the target audience and the people making these shows. 
If you look at the history of 20th century fashion in America, exciting and game-changing new trends emerge via teen subcultures, people of color and queer communities first. Then they're watered down for mainstream retailers aimed at white middle-class customers. In terms of TV representation, this is very visible in sitcoms, which run for hundreds of episodes depicting everyday life and shifting trends. In the 1990s, Frasier gave us an archetypal vision of a white, middle-aged, upper-middle-class world with a wardrobe of bland suits and unflattering beige cardigans. At the same time, Saved by the Bell offered a zany, colourful look at young teenage trends. And The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air offered a multi-generational look at black fashion in the 90s, involving bolder patterns, colour choices and silhouettes than you'd see in Frasier. In some ways, sitcoms allow more freedom of expression than other mainstream TV genres because they're allowed to be silly and fun. This also explains why you don't see as many exciting fashion trends in crime procedurals or edgy thrillers. Yes. From lighting choices to promotional posters, we associate bright colours with upbeat stories, while darkness represents danger, mystery and maturity. This general idea actually extends to the real world, where fast food joints are brightly lit and colourful, while more expensive restaurants and adults-only bars have atmospheric lighting. On screen, we can see this idea play out with Batman. When he was a comedy character, he wore a bright costume in a colourful world. But when he began to star in violent, morally ambiguous thrillers, he shifted into a dark and gloomy colour palette. We expect sitcoms to be brightly lit and colourful because it puts us in the correct headspace to laugh. I discussed this in my episode on The Room, a movie that looks like a sitcom but is meant to be a serious drama, creating a very disconcerting atmosphere. I'll link to that episode in the description below. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! Real world sitcoms invite us to engage with their characters as peers, with costumes that send clear signals about the personality and overall demographics of the main cast. A lot of the time, their outfits are chosen to be friendly yet forgettable, fading into the background so we can focus on the jokes. Meanwhile, the lighting and production design work hand in hand to bolster the fourth wall between the audience and the story. In a crime drama, we are encouraged to smoothly immerse ourselves in a mystery for 45 minutes. But with sitcoms, there is a slight divide between us and the show, allowing us to engage with the characters while also suspending our disbelief about outlandish punchlines and helping us join in with the laughter of an invisible studio audience. Greetings, friends. <laughs> Greetings, whatever the hell you are. As WandaVision progresses, the walls between comedy and drama begin to break down. When the main characters are trapped in their sitcom universe, they exist in a world of bright colours, vintage fashion choices and pre-written punchlines. But outside of this magical bubble, the world is dark and dangerous, with obvious visual ties to the action-packed tone of the Marvel movies. When the viewpoint shifts over to the real world in episode 4, the screen expands to accommodate wide-open shots, signalling our departure from a safe domestic setting. The colour palette switches to grey-blue metallic tones, fitting the mood of a high-tech thriller and the costumes immediately become more subdued and businesslike. Even Darcy Lewis, an upbeat comedy sidekick from the Thor franchise, is now wearing grey. It's a simple but effective illustration of how colour and lighting prime us for different types of storytelling, playing into the viewer's expectations about how different TV genres should look. Thanks for watching Behind the Scenes! What's your favourite sitcom of all time? And how has the fashion aged if you still watch it today? Let me know in the comments section below, and I'll see you in the next one!